Hi everyone, it's August 6, 2018. I was sent two articles from subscribers who I want to thank and I want to bring them to your attention. Wells Fargo says hundreds of customers lost homes after computer glitch. Remember that housing crisis? And Wells Fargo had foreclosed upon so many of their customers foreclosed on after software used by Wells Fargo incorrectly denied them mortgage modifications. Well, it was revealed in a regulatory filing this week that Wells Fargo had put aside eight million to compensate customers after or affected by the glitch. The same filing also disclosed that Wells Fargo is facing formal or informal inquiries or investigations from unnamed government agencies over how the company purchased federal low income housing tax credits. Wow, okay, so do you see the interplay between government and these private banks? The document states the probes are linked to the financing of low-income housing developments. All right, um, th this corruption has been ongoing in this country for so long, and it is unbelievable that, yes, we still allow it to operate. Wells Fargo said in a statement that it's very sorry that this error occurred and said it was providing remediation to the affected customers. I can guarantee you that remediation is not going to make those customers whole again. But Wells Fargo also said there's not a clear direct cause and effect relationship between the modification denials and foreclosures, but confirmed customers who were denied modifications lost their homes. And guess what? Many went homeless. Earlier this week, the Justice Department announced Wells Fargo agreed to pay $2.1 billion in a fine for issuing mortgage loans it knew contained incorrect income information. The government said the loans contributed to the 2008 financial crisis that crippled the global economy. And I have said in many videos, Eric Holder came out and announced, we're not going to prosecute banks for their fraud because it will hurt the economy. Well, guess what? Americans should have really, well, stuck their faces out the window and screamed, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore, but they didn't. So they just take it and take it and take it. And what what is really occurring here? Okay, so Wells Fargo forecloses on innocent Americans and they benefit because they take their homes and then resell them. So they benefit financially. They have built in billions of dollars to pay these fines when the government decides to investigate and it comes out, hey, Wells Fargo, uh, you did something wrong. And we're not going to criminally prosecute. We're just going to hit you with a fine that we know that you have already built in as just this fund for these fines and it is our way of getting money from Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo pays the government 2.1 billion. Okay, I don't have to go to jail. I can continue operating as I always have. You get to have 2.1 billion it's not going to help those 
that were victims of my fraud, but hey, you get to have that, those billions and I get to remain free operating as usual. Did you get what I'm saying? I hope I was clear. All of this is just a scam. Government gets paid billions of dollars from these banks. The banks are not hurt by the fines. The only people who get hurt are innocent Americans. And this has been going on for a very, very long time. In June, Wells Fargo was accused by the Federal Securities and Exchange Commission for using complex financial investments to take advantage of mom and pop investors. And what's going to happen with that? Well, they might get fined again. But all of the fines, those are billions, hey, we, we have a little fund here to pay off these fines. We don't care because we still reap the benefits of what we are doing. Because government will not shut us down. They will not prosecute under any, any uh, criminal laws. We get to operate as usual. The most far-reaching scandal involving uh, Wells Fargo was the creation of millions of fake accounts the company created for unsuspecting customers in order to boost its sales figures. And that came out in 2016. The bank also admitted to hitting customers with unfair mortgage fees and charging people for car insurance they didn't need. But they still continue to operate as usual. Please see through this scam that is taking place. Government benefits, banks benefit, Americans get screwed. And while we have an awful lot of people now denouncing capitalism and <laughs> fighting for socialism, you know, the free market capitalism, it, it, it never operated in our country. We never had a free market. So for those who are arguing that capitalism is the problem, it is why we have so many people um, in poverty today. It's the root cause of poverty. The rich and poor divide. It's capitalism. And they're calling for socialism. They, they don't see what this system is. It's not a free market capitalist society. We never had that. We did have a modified free market uh, capitalist economic structure for a couple of decades. And during those decades, that was when we created a huge middle class. Americans on the whole, not every American, but the majority of Americans were living a decent, comfortable life. They were able to pay their bills. They were able to pay their mortgages. And that was a time when we had corporations that honored, honored their agreements with their employees. And that was a time when corporations actually made a tremendous amount of money. But they don't need that anymore. So what happened? Was it capitalism? No. It was corruption. Cronyism. The pay-to-play government that now is so in our face that it can't be denied, but like the banks and the corporations that just, well, they pay their fine, but they operate exactly the same way because they're never closed down 
and criminally prosecuted and sent to jail. And we even had an attorney general who said, we're not even going to prosecute these banks for their fraud. What, ha what, what did Americans do? The same thing the banks did. Operate as usual. Operate as usual in a completely corrupt system that just continues to push more and more Americans over the edge. So it's, it's like you hear these people who are arguing that this country has to become a socialist country in order to fix all of the ills. My God! Why is it that they're not fighting the corruption that has taken us down? It has not been capitalism. It has not been this free market system that they actually believe exists. The free market system exists for corporations where they get to do freely whatever the hell they want to do. It's a socialist system for the corporations and banks because they get subsidized by the same government that refuses to criminally prosecute them. They get hit with fines. These corporations, these banks don't give a shit because it doesn't hurt them. Instead of fighting socialism, why don't you fight the corruption that exists? And boy, you know, we really have been incredibly stupid for so long. And yes, Americans, they're masochists. We, look, I do not separate myself from what I speak because for decades I was com completely indoctrinated. But somehow one has to grow and really, you know, do that work. Reevaluate those beliefs. That you hold because beliefs are just that. They're just beliefs. Doesn't mean it's true. It's just that you hold a belief. And beliefs, well, when you begin to reevaluate them and they begin to kind of unravel and, and well, it causes a lot of cognitive dissonance and um, it disrupts your comfort for a while. And yeah, Americans love their comfort, so they won't give it up. And for those of you who still are adamant that Americans have nothing to do with this, we have everything to do with the nightmare that has manifested everything to do with it because we allow all of this corruption to continue and what now has manifested is corruption in our face in our face on a daily basis and still still it's either completely and utterly denied or it's accepted. Yeah, well, every government is corrupt, okay? But, and I'm still going to vote for the lesser of two evil. Now, that's one. That's an MO of Americans. And that is something that really needs to be taken, you know, really reevaluate that because this thing voting for the lesser of two evils. I'm nearing 60 and my entire life, that's what Americans have done. Vote for the lesser of two evils. Well, guess what? When you vote for the lesser of two evils, you get evil. It only manifests a little bit slowly, more slower than voting for the evil.
we really do have to take a look at <laughs> how we operate um, and try to do the work necessary to change so that we become a little bit more wise. You know, even if your home was not foreclosed upon, but you're still getting affected by all of this. And the system is artificially held up. It is going to crash and take out more and more people. So, yeah, everybody, everybody, even if you're not aware of the consequences that you suffer because of this kind of um, corrupt system that exists, and it ain't free market capitalism. We never really allowed that, allowed that to take root and operate. We only had a modified version of it for a couple of decades, and it was allowed to exist, I believe, just to create the wealth that was created during those decades. So, oh God, you know, don't you wish, don't you wish that you could see some change. Remarkable how the same old, same old continues on and on and on until, until the individual changes and we need the individual in the aggregate to change. But until that happens, nothing's going to change. The second article that I was going to do, I'll do in, a, in my...